what we have so far seen is that <coughs> Carnatic music is primarily this is a melodic system. It is a highly nuanced melodic system. How exactly it is nuanced is something that we will see in our forthcoming sessions. We have taken a look at the musical material, the seven swaras and their five variants which really form the musical material for any music at all in the world. We have <coughs> looked at the concept of sthai or the octave. Sa, sa. Now, it, between these two lies one octave. Sa, ni, dha, pa. This is the lower register, the mandra sthai. Sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni. This is the madhya sthai. And sa, re, ga, ma. And so on is the tara sthai. We have also seen the concepts of ascending and descending scales, arohana and abrohana. An arohi scale is, is an ascending scale. Rigamapa, sarigamapa, these are all arohi. This gapamaga, pamagari, magarisa, these are all descending scales. And music making essentially involves arohi and avarohi phrases. And there are phrases, there are sometimes you, you use the same note for a long time, and that is another movement possible. Sa, this is possible. Ga, this is possible. But you can't keep doing this, you have to have movement also, <coughs> which is what. Arohi and Avrohi phrases are all about. We have also seen the concept of the Adhara Shatya or the, the fundamental, the tonic. And <coughs> we have seen that the Carnatic musician or any Indian musician for that matter chooses the tonic of his or her convenience depending on the range depending on his or her vocal range and performs with that as the base. And it is expected that any Carnatic vocalist and in Carnatic music the voice is the primary instrument, vocal music is central to this tradition as we will see later on. Instrumental music is built around the vocal tradition. It draws from the vocal tradition. So, the vocalist is expected to have a range of half an octave below the Adhara Shatya and one and a half octaves above the Adhara Shatya. So, you have a range of two octaves. And Carnatic music can be performed with this two, range, the two octave range with any pitch at all as the fundamental or the tonic. <coughs> now, so much talk about music and much more to follow. It is perhaps a good time to reflect on what this exercise of bringing such a course to you can achieve or what I can attempt to achieve in this course. Now, music is something that is best heard and experienced. If you can create music, that is even better. But Talking about music, there are musicians who disdain any attempt to talk about music and for good reasons. But why? What is the, the rationale, the reason, what is the gain of such courses such as this? Now, listening to music and enjoying it is like stargazing. And I am borrowing this metaphor from Carl C. Shore, uh, who has written this landmark book, Psychology of Music. Stargazing can give us sublime moments. Just looking at endless clusters of twinkling diamonds on this black carpet 
hanging down as it were. It can, it is surely beyond words. The experience is beyond words. And it can put us in touch with the deepest recesses of our being. And music can also do that, listening to music can also do that. That is its value, really. Now, what about an astronomer who studies stars and other celestial bodies? Does he also enjoy the experience of stargazing? Surely, an astronomer too must marvel at the sight of a starry sky. And probably with greater intensity, because she has an idea, she knows something about that world. She knows something about the stuff and the order of that world. And she also knows that there is so much else that is unknown that is yet to be explored. Now, a course such as this can only attempt to lay bare the complexities of this very sophisticated musical form that is Carnatic music. And this will hopefully urge you to embark on a journey yourself. Hmm. But stargazing must never be left behind. And listening to music, listening to Carnatic music must, is really a part of this course. So I will be playing music, I'll be playing clips as part of this course and I urge you to listen to them and soak in the music because that, as I said, is really what all this is ultimately about. Uh, a rendition of a composition by Maharaja Swati Turnal in the Raga Panturali, which is set to Nadi Talam. The performer is Srimati Emma Subbalakshmi. I would just leave you to listen to it without any suggestions about what to look for in the music. Later on in the course, we will attempt some guided listening too. So that, as I said, was Srimati M. S. Subbalakshmi singing a composition of Maharaja Swati Turnal in the Raga Pantuvarali set to Anadi Talam. Now this is the schema that is the, the name of the composer, the name of the raga, and the name of the tada. This is the default description of any piece of Carnatic music. Of course, the names of the performers are also uh, included. But given that you know the performer, the piece is described in terms of the composer, the raga, and the tada. Now, it is interesting to reflect to consider how other, how pieces from other musical genres are described. For instance, if you have a film song in, in our country, film music is the popular music. How is a film song typically described? You would say it, it is featured in this film, the lyricist the person who wrote the lyrics is such and such a person and the music director is this person, maybe Ayar Rahman or Ilya Raja or whoever it is. And that is how the film song is described. How is a folk song described? You, you would describe it maybe with a reference to what the folk song is about, what occasion it is sung on and so on. Now, as a matter of fact, a film song or a folk song are very likely based or they are very likely in a raga, much like a, a piece in Carnatic music. But we never mention the, the raga on which a film song may be based. For instance, there is this um, fairly 
a well known film song it is a few maybe a decade or so ago it goes like this yen veetu thottathil poovellam kettu paar yen veetu jannal kambi ellame kettu paar yen veetu tennangitre ippode kettu paar yen nenjai solluve now this is a film song which is featured in a film called gentleman a tamil film and this is out and out cast in the in a carnatic raga called shankara bharanam not only in terms of the notes but also in terms of the nuances it captures shankara bharanam quite well but when we describe when we have to introduce the song in we in we to thottathil we would never refer to the raga but a carnatic piece as i said is always mentioned by talking about the raga and the taal and the composer why because this is what is central to the music even though other forms of music in india draw from ragas they use ragas for their purposes it is only in carnatic and hindustani music that raga becomes the central focus the focus of the presentation is the raga and the presentation revolves around a com- com- composition which is set in a particular tala so that is how these three elements become very crucial in a carnatic piece thus we can say that raga and tala are the twin underlying entities that form a grid as it were for carnatic music and what is meant by this just that the focus of the presentation is the raga and the presentation is organized around the tala now as i said other forms of music also do draw from ragas and in fact folk music has been a source of ragas for carnatic music for instance there is this very well known raga called ananda bhairavi which is in origin a folk raga it's a folk tune which has been taken into carnatic music and given the shape of a raga the folk tune will go something like this no this is a folk tune in ananda bhairavi and this has been the source of uh, the raga ananda bhairavi in carnatic music now as promised i will play another clip in which professor vivi subramanyam has performed this raga ananda bhairavi vivi subramanyam is a is a highly respected violinist here he's a virtuoso and and a great master and we were lucky to have him here in our studios performing for us please listen to ananda bhairavi as performed by vivi subramanyam we have tiruvarur bhaktavatsalam on the mridangam accompanying him on the mridangam listen to it and see how this folk tune has been transformed into a classical raga
a glimpse of Ananda. But a question for a novice is always this, that a Carnatic piece is so long. Um, even a 10 minute long rendition is long for a, a novice and a Carnatic rendition, a, a, a piece in a Carnatic rendition can go up to 45, to 45 minutes to an hour. So what does a Carnatic musician do for this long? How can anyone perform just a single piece for so long? This is a, a valid question. Now the answer lies in the scope offered by the raga and also the presentation format that has evolved in Carnatic music. So we have two aspects, we have the raga. Now, Many core traditional Carnatic ragas offer immense scope for exploration, for build up. Number two, the presentation of a Carnatic piece has four or five elements and we will talk more about this later. And of these four or five elements, co the composition is certainly one, the others are aspects of improvisation. 